Welcome to the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling's Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us today. Before we get started with our presentation, just a few quick housekeeping items to go over. Uh, the first is that attendees are welcome and certainly encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A feature. You can pose a question to a specific presenter or ask a general question to any and all of the presenters. Also, just a reminder that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. There are additional sessions this evening, so please feel free to sign up for them at the same website where you signed up for this session. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same website. But without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, which will be the University of East London. Thank you, Chris. I am just going to share my screen. Perfect. So thank you guys so much for joining us this evening. My name is Caitlin Benania and I am the America's Recruitment Officer here at the University of East London. And today I'm going to discuss studying in London versus how that compares to studying in the US. So before I talk about studying in London, I just want to talk about the city first. So this quote says, when a man is tired of London, he is tired of life. And I really think that this quote captures the kind of beauty and essence of London. It's an extremely diverse city. It's filled with opportunities and excitement. Um, I think my favorite thing about living in London is the fact that you never know what's waiting for you around the corner. Um, I've been living here for three years now and I still haven't done everything that there is to do in London. And I don't think there are that many places in the world that can offer you that. So this is a photo of our Docklands campus. We've got three campuses all in East London. Um, the Docklands campus is definitely our main campus. As you can see, it's right on the river. Um, we're also one of the few London universities with on-campus on campus accommodation. Um, as you can see, we're set in a very um, residential area of London. We, um, if you take a look at the circle in the photo, that is actually the on-campus tube station that we have. Um, so we're very fortunate to have um, a tube station right on campus that connects us to the rest of London and it makes, um, it makes for traveling super easy and super convenient. Um, so like I said, we've got three campuses in East London. Um, the university's roots can be traced back to 1892 and we gained university status in 1992. Um, we've got about 17,000 students on campus, 20% of which are international students. And we've got a wide variety of subjects spread across six schools. So education, business and law, health, sport and bioscience, art and creative industries, architecture and computing, as well as our school of psychology. So just to compare um, studying at UEL versus studying in the US, um, our application is free. So you've literally got nothing to lose by applying. Um, we participate in rolling admission and we aim to send your decision to you um, within two to four weeks. The deadline to submit your application is the end of July. However, I would definitely recommend um, applying sooner rather than later, just so that you can get your decision sooner. Um, and probably the biggest difference between studying in the UK versus studying in the US is the fact that you can earn your bachelor's degree in three years instead of four. And so not only are you saving time, but you're also saving quite 
a bit of money as well. So tuition fees for your first year are just 19,000 US dollars and um, free textbooks are included. So you're not gonna be expected to upfront any of the costs per textbook. And that brings tuition for your entire degree to just 57,000 US dollars, which is just a fraction of the cost of studying in the US. And accommodation, I love to talk about accommodation just because it was one of my favorite things during my time as a student. Um, all of our rooms on campus are private and ensuite, meaning you get your own room as well as your own bathroom and shower. And um, you just have to share the kitchen and you'll be sharing between three and five other students. Accommodation starts at 8,000 per year and meal plans are not compulsory. Um, you'll have your own kitchen that's fully equipped and we're also um, walking distance to the local grocery stores so um, you are definitely better off cooking your own meals and um, when in doubt uber eats is definitely a thing and so if you've got any questions at all do feel free to pop them in the chat box um, or if you uh, feel free to save my email um, if you've got any questions or if you want to set up a facetime or a zoom call um, i know that applying to colleges can be a very daunting thing, let alone colleges outside of the US. And um, as you can tell by my accent, it's not a British accent. I am American and I did study in London. So I would be more than happy to share my experience with you as well. Um, I hope you found this presentation informative and insightful and I'm going to hand things back over to my colleague, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much, University of East London. Uh, up next will be University of Essex. Hi, everyone. Um, let me just begin by sharing my screen with you. Um, great. Hi, my name is Emma, and I uh, work in the Americas team at the University of Essex. I know that I have about six minutes to speak with you, so I've made it nice and easy and split this into um, six of my favourite things um, about Essex. So first off is our location. We have three campuses. They are lo located, they're all in Essex. Um, but they are located uh, in Colchester, South End, and Loughton. Colchester is the largest of our three campuses where the majority of our students are taught and uh, where most of our students are studying. Uh, one of the things I love about the location is it's really uh, accessible to London. So Colchester is about 45 minutes or so to London, which for me is the perfect distance. You're close enough if you want to get into the city, but you're far enough away, so um, you're not paying uh, London prices. We're also within uh, easy access of lots of international airports. So if you're wanting to get a real European experience and travel whilst you're studying in the UK, then uh, we're surrounded by uh, several international airports. Colchester is the UK's oldest recorded town, so there's lots of beautiful um, Roman architecture around the town. Uh, we do have some of the UK's best weather, so the weather isn't something that we're particularly well known for uh, in the UK, but certainly where we're located, uh, you can see on that map, southeast, we do have some of the UK's best weather. And the, my favourite thing is probably the fact that we um, have a real mix of beaches, we're close to the city of London, we're surrounded by some really beautiful villages and countryside as well, so it's a great mix of everything. Next up is academic teaching. So in 2018, we were awarded University of the Year. That was something we were incredibly proud of because we were, really felt that we were recognized for putting students first. We are gold rated in the teaching excellence framework. So that's a testament to the quality of the teaching. And we're also recognized for our research quality. We're a school that's really well known for our social sciences. In particular, we're ranked incredibly highly for politics um, and sociology. Um, international relations, economics, these are subjects that we're consistently really well, well ranked for. And something that I love about our um, approach to teaching is it's a really interdisciplinary approach. So if you're wanting to pick classes or modules across different departments, then um, it's, it's certainly possible with, with many of our uh, subjects in social sciences and humanities in particular. We offer a wide range of subjects and there's a link just at the bottom of that page if you wanted to check them out in a bit more detail. 
So next up is student life. We've got over 160 sports clubs and societies. Some of those range from the more traditional sports clubs and societies, um, but we've got lots of slightly more obscure ones as well. Uh, like I said, there's over 160, so there's bound to be something that you're interested in. My piece of advice is when you join university, sign up to as many different clubs and societies that you think you might be interested in. You can always drop the ones that you're not so fond of uh, slightly later down the line. We offer on-campus guaranteed accommodation so you get to live on uh, campus, you get a real university, um, traditional university experience, and we're ranked seventh for spend on services and facilities per spend. So we're pumping money back into the university so students can enjoy facilities. A couple of examples will be a brand new STEM centre that we've got and um, a brand new sports arena on campus team. So next is cost effective. You may already be aware of this, our degrees in the UK are three year. Um, so already that's one whole year's worth of fees that you won't have to pay for. Um, fees are really competitive. They do vary from institution to institution, um, but at Essex our fees are about 16 and a half to just under 20,000 pounds per academic year. Um, that's for the next academic year that's approaching. Um, so particularly if you're comparing to out of state tuition, then it's, it's very competitive. Lots of scholarships are available. Some are um, merit based, so they might be automatic. Others you might have to submit an application for. Our America's Regional Scholarship, for example, is worth £3,000 towards your tuition. And we do offer some really competitive uh, sports scholarships too. We're also FAFSA accredited. So if you're wanting, uh, wondering how you might fund your studies, then you can um, use federal aid to fund your studies in the UK and Essex. Um, so next we have employability. Lots of our uh, undergraduate degrees have placement uh, years built within the, within the degree. So if you're particularly career orientated and you wanted to get industry experience whilst you're studying your degree, then a placement year might be a really great opportunity for you. We have some really good employability stats as well. So 91% of our undergraduate students are in employment or further study. So that's within six months of graduating. There are employability modules built into our undergraduate degrees, so you're getting um, help with writing your CV um, and there's opportunities to network and plenty of career events that are on campus as well. So there's lots of different things that are going on that you can take advantage of outside the classroom too. And something that I love about Essex is the fact that you get an opportunity to learn a language alongside your degree. It's completely for free. Um, at, at our Colchester campus, you can choose one of up to seven languages um, and yeah, you can learn a language completely for free whilst you're studying for your degree. And this is probably my favourite thing about Essex, just how international the university is. So we're ranked fourth in the UK for international outlook in the Times Higher Education World University rankings. And it's not just our students that are from all over the world. It's very much um, our, our staff as well. And it's also reflected in our curriculum. So what you'll be studying is very much an international curriculum. Over 140 nationalities are represented um, on our Colchester campus. That's almost 40% of our students. So you'll be studying, living and working with people from all over the world. And I think that's my time up. So I will just go to the last screen. And if you've got any further questions at all, please don't hesitate to contact me. That is my email address. Thank you very much, University of Essex. Uh, moving on this evening, we have University of Glasgow. All right, hello, hello everyone. Back to not having a uh, Scottish accent, but working for a Scottish school. Um, I hope you all can see this. My name is Jay Shamlin. I'm one of our international officers for the University of Glasgow. I am based in Chicago, Illinois, and I recruit for the Northeast and Midwest parts of the United States. So anything for study abroad, postgrad, undergrad, you name it, that is pretty much on your first point of contact. So University of Glasgow was founded in 1451. We're an ancient Scottish university and we're, we're the fourth oldest English speaking university in the entire world behind Oxford, Cambridge and St. Andrews. We have about 30,000 students from over 140 different countries. About, of that 30,000, about 18,000 are undergrad and the rest will be PhD, study abroad, master speaking students. Um, well, we're only 2% U.S. That's always something I, I stress to kids when they start looking abroad. First thing you should look at is, you know, how American do you really want to feel, right? Because I can tell you right now, being only 2% U.S., you're going to be probably in a few ones in the classroom versus, um, you know, to a school that had a large American population. Uh, we're in 67th in the Q.S. World Rankings. We're the 29th most international, international university in the world. But again, I'm kind of going on and on about uh, 
some of the accolades of Glasgow. But going on to Scotland, it was voted the most beautiful country in the world in 2019. As you can tell, what I love, this is Loch Lomond, which is about 40 minutes from campus driving. And it's beautiful that, you know, everything of Scotland is the rolling lush hills, the picturesque views, which is very true. But the University of Glasgow is going to be located in Glasgow. Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland at about 1 million people. Scotland as a country is only 5 million people. So it is a small country where there are more sheep than there are people, but you are going to be in the largest city. Um, we're UNESCO City of Music, which means we offer 200 live music events a week pre-COVID. Um, the Hydra is the second busiest arena and the venue in the world. But as I said, we're located in Glasgow's West End, which is going to be about, I'd say, 15 minutes walking distance to the city center. So if you're from, you know, um, like New York, Brooklyn to Manhattan, very similar to that. Um, and I, this is probably my favorite part of Glasgow on the photo behind us. This is going to be our uh, street called Ashton Lane, about 200 feet from campus behind our geology building. As you can see, it's a pedestrian only street. And as you can tell, there's lots of restaurants and pubs and shops that you that students are able to kind of hang out at that are basically right on campus uh, or, or stones throw away. And it's just kind of a fun place to hang out, especially, you know, pre-COVID. Now, Beautiful aerial shot of campus, and I'm sure the first building that popped out to you is going to be the main building, which is designed by Sir George in the 1800s. It is a Glasgow quintessential landmark, um, pretty much any marking material for Glasgow. Uh, fun fact, you can go up the clock tower uh, when, it, uh, when it is not windy, but it is the clock tower using the movie Harry Potter, and that is a fun fact. Uh, you'll see here that we have 13, 13 story library with over 2 million books uh, in the library, but what's great on the 13th floor, which gives you the best view of Glasgow, was going to be uh, special collections, which is where some of Shakespeare's manuscripts are and a lot of very rare items that you I never thought I'd be able to interact with, which I've done when I visited campus. But your building that you're probably most worried about is going to be the Fraser Building. This is our student resource building on the fourth floor is one of our dining hall options. Uh, well, uh, we're very similar to the to, uh, University of East London, uh, where, you know, it's going to be more self-catered. So there is an eating option on campus, but, you know, there's no meal plan that you need to buy into. On the third floor is going to be your Office of International Student Support. And then on the second floor will be the doctor's office and also the bookstore. Subject areas, we have over 500 different program accommodations that you're able to choose from the University of Glasgow. Um, this is going to be the difference between Scotland and the rest of the United Kingdom is that we are a four-year institution. England, Wales, and Northern Ireland are all three years. I find a lot of U.S. students gravitate towards Scotland at the end of when they're choosing for looking for schools, just because they're used to having that freshman, sophomore, and junior, junior, senior year. This is a physics student here, and I think the big thing I like to point out is that you apply to your field of study in the U.K., and then in Scotland, as you can see, we give you additional areas of study during your freshman year. So three, three areas of study, as opposed to if you're starting at year two in the rest of the UK, where you'll get one area of study. Just the general rule of thumb is that we're looking for programs that are gonna be similar. So typically, you, we want these to be similar programs. That it's very rare you see a student seeing, uh, you know, a lot of physics, music, and business. But it's nice because you're taking more of the courses that you're looking to take, as opposed to yeah, the two years of gen that you hear in the United States. When it comes to applying, uh, we, are, we are very test heavy. Uh, standardized tests are very important in the UK, uh, but, we are, but we have moved to test optional as well for our COVID students that were affected. Um, so we're looking for at least a 1280 SAT or 27 ACT and then two AP exams of a four or above and relevant field. Please ignore SAT subject tests because those are, have uh, been abolished and the why this applies on there. Um, and but then we are doing test optional for students coming for this fall and for next fall for a test optional student you must have a minimum 3.5 unweighted GPA. And then we are also looking for um, honors level coursework, AP coursework, or dual enrollment coursework in that field of study that you are going to be applying to. And then additional information, tuition starts at about $27,000 a year, actually. And depending on what program you're going into, it'll go up. Uh, we are uh, available for uh, undergraduate uh, scholarships as well, too. There's one called the Undergraduate Excellence Scholarship, which will be automatically considered for. You do need to score a five on the AP exam to be considered for it, but it is 5,000 pounds off of tuition, uh, which is about it's like $6,200 US, so which is a pretty good chunk of change. And then there are three, S three US based international officers. I'm based in Chicago, as I said, but Northeast and Midwest, Jason's in DC, and then Ashley's in Santa Ana, California. So we are here on your time zones, working with your high schools. So any questions that you do have, we are able to help you with that. And that is the rest of the presentation. Claire, can we hand this back to you? Thank you very much, University of Glasgow. 
Uh, as we move into the second half of our presentations, just a reminder to anybody who joined us late, uh, please feel free to ask any questions to any of the panelists utilizing the Q&A feature. But up next is the University of Melbourne. Okay, good day everyone. I'm Todd St. Brain, the University of Melbourne North America Manager. So this is the only Australian university today. We are a lot like the UK, but we tend to say that our weather is better. Um, I am American, but went to graduate school in Australia and don't sound like it, but I'm a dual Australian American citizen. So welcome to UniMelp, or as we say in the local Aboriginal language, Wamanjaika. So Melbourne is a large public research intensive uh, institution in the southern part of Australia. And as a comprehensive institution with many disciplines uh, that excel at the global level, I think really compelling is that this is the Great Barrier Reef, which is about four hours flight north of Melbourne. And imagine taking classes even in your first year with Madeleine Van Oppel, who is bioengineering heat resistant coral in an effort to save the Great Barrier Reef. So I think this is a great example of the academic experience you can have of a place that we really are trying to attract brilliant minds who wanna make a difference in the world. Uh, this is our main campus, which is about 15 minutes from downtown Melbourne, sandwiched in between uh, the biomedical precinct and walking distance to Little Italy. And we are regarded as an Australian version of an Ivy League down under. Uh, what I love about Australia is that it's a very multicultural country. Yes, uh, we also have a very large uh, proportion of international students from around the world. Uh, we probably have several hundred um, Americans, so there is a U.S. Uh, community there if you want it, plus from around the world. Uh, we have great outcomes for our graduates, and one thing to note is that at the end of your degree, you will have the option to stay and work in Australia for two years, so you have uh, options in terms of where you can start your, your career. So um, also like much of Europe, our degrees are just three years, which is a savings in itself. Um, your tuition will be in Australian dollars, but at the current exchange rate, it's gonna be around 33,000 US dollars a year for uh, tuition and probably another $20,000 a year uh, US in living expenses. Uh, you can use US educational loans uh, at Melbourne. Now, our admissions is based just on academic achievement, and we'll get just into the details of that uh, shortly. And you're doing all of this in truly one of the most livable cities. Uh, these are images from downtown, uh, which is about 10, 10 minutes away. Melbourne is regarded as Australia's cultural and sports capital. So we have streamlined our degree options into eight degrees with about uh, 150 majors, which could include Bachelor of Agriculture, we call liberal arts arts. I've put in bold here some of more more popular majors. And yes, there are combinations of majors and minors, uh, an entire degree in biomedicine. Uh, we call business commerce. You're gonna have to learn to speak Australian as well as design, uh, two degrees in the fine arts and music, uh, as well as plethora in uh, science, including engineering and IT. And yes, we do have marine biology, which everyone seems to ask about. So we call degrees courses. So um, if you go to our find a course page, this will be uh, to explore your interest because your interest could certainly be in more than one major and possibly more than one degree. So even within our three year degrees, uh, you are going to do 25% of your studies outside of your degree in what we call breadth subjects. So this is a way for you to still explore your um, interests, kind of create your own minor, minor uh, as well as still by finishing your degree before you would in the United States. If you want to extend to a fourth year, we have these things called concurrent diplomas, or you could do an optional fourth year of independent uh, research. So the entry requirements do vary slightly per degree. We do provide guaranteed entry for international students based on a minimum SAT or ACT score, a minimum unweighted GPA. And we do have a, a AP exams to meet uh, prerequisites. And again, this can be uh, quite particular to some degrees. 
We are not test optional, but we are test alternative. We know how hard it's been to fit the SAT or ACT. So there's an Australian stat test that you can do online or an aggregate of AP scores uh, to meet that requirement. And if you're not presenting an AP exam uh, to meet the prereqs, the option would be a dual credit, uh, like university level course, you'd have to submit the syllabus for review. We also take the IB. Um, any transfer students, uh, we do also transfer. Our first semester starts in March, second semester starts late July. You can start in actually either semester because the core classes are offered in each semester. Uh, our application deadlines are really crazy from your perspective. We offer rolling admissions, and my advice is just to apply when you're applying to U.S. universities since we have rolling admissions. And deferrals can also be um, standard for a little bit of a set gap here. We do have guaranteed accommodation. There's also clubs and societies. We'll finish, finish with a campus tour, beautiful sandstone buildings, but also modern facilities. Um, including our underground Kapar Park, where they do things like film Mad Max and MasterChef Australia, and this is classic Melbourne. So please get in contact if you would like more information. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, University of Melbourne. Uh, up next will be University of Roehampton. Thank you, Christopher. Let me just bring up my screen here. All right, hopefully everyone can see that. So we are University of Roehampton and we are located in Southwest London and we are considered London's campus university because we have a true beautiful traditional campus in Southwest London. And just recently we were ranked in the top 10 universities of London um, just within the past few years. And we are about a 30 minute bus ride into central London. But if you take the tube or the subway, as we would say in America, then um, it's more about a 15 minute ride into downtown. So really nothing, um, you know, for those New Yorkers on the call today, um, it would be no different than, um, you know, taking a commute uptown in Manhattan in New York City. And we have a beautiful and rich history of dating back to 175 or more years um, with the University of Roehampton. And so we've been educating educators and researchers, as we like to say, for almost two centuries. And just to go into a few facts now, we have a three-year bachelor's degree as we are located in London in the UK. And we do accept US federal aid. For, so for anyone that was looking to utilize US federal aid to attend college, you can do that at Roehampton. And we have scholarships available as well, plenty of scholarships. So I highly recommend looking into those. And we are excited that just this year, they're bringing back the post-study work visa. So you will be able to um, stay in the UK and to work and live for up to two years on a visa after completing a degree with us, if you wanted to. And we have very lovely and affordable housing options or accommodations rather on campus. So that's definitely something to look into. We have both um, undergraduate specific accommodations as well as more high-end options that a lot of our postgraduate students look to stay in. So there's plenty of different options available and they're all singles, which is really nice. And we have numerous sports and different clubs and societies available on campus. One thing that I find really unique and interesting is we've got four colleges within our university and all four of them, depending on where you live or which um, college your program is located within, battles throughout the year to win essentially a house cup at the end of each academic year, similar to what you would find in the Harry Potter series. So I think that that's just a really fun type of um, camaraderie on campus. And then uh, one thing that I also love about the visa to study in the UK as a student is that you have eligibility to work either on campus or off campus. So you could find a job anywhere in London if you wanted to work or intern or if you needed to, to make money. And we have a very diverse campus with 141 nationalities across campus. And we are only 10% international from an 8,000 student, um, student body or population. 
So as an American student, you would be a very um, small amount of Americans on campus. So you're really immersing yourself into that full American, or I'm sorry, UK, um, you know, experience as an American. And we have seven academic departments, which I will get to in a moment. Um, but just quickly, here's a map and you can see where central London is and where University of Roh uh, Roehampton is located. And then there are our seven departments um, for academia. So you're looking at arts, business, education, humanities, life sciences, psychology, and social sciences. And then for how to apply, I did want to quickly touch base on the fact that we have a free application on our website. Um, so you really have nothing to lose, which is great. And if you are applying through the UCAS and applying to multiple schools in the UK, you're still able to do that as we're on the UCAS as well. And just to quickly touch base on how affordable our tuition is. So for the tuition, you're looking at under 20,000 US dollars per year um, to attend Roehampton. And don't forget to multiply that by only three years instead of four years of study. So you're saving a lot compared to studying in the US. And there is a list of those scholarships I spoke about. And then just to quickly show you, here's what our beautiful campus looks like. And it's got a lot of lakes um, and outdoor space to be able to breathe in fresh air. And um, just to quickly run over this, we are um, a research university and we've got 100% in some departments, but 66% overall of our programs being considered a world-class research standard. And there is just some photos of the accommodation and I wanna be conscious of time, but we have a lot of availability on campus for competitive sports, clubs, societies, like I said, pretty much anything and everything you could think of, uh, there's a club for that for you to join. Um, and I did want to quickly touch on, we have a new program. So anyone who has played soccer in the US might want to look into our new um, study play program in uh, conjoining with the um, football Premier League Crystal Palace. So that's something to um, get in touch with me about if you're interested. And then just to finish it off with, if you're interested in getting in touch, please go ahead and scan your phone over that. Um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Rohampton. And now we're gonna move on to our final presenter for this session, the University of Stirling. Thanks, Christopher. Just bear with me till I get my PowerPoint hopefully you can all see that. Um, hello, um, last but not least, it's uh, the University of Stirling. And yes, I do have a Scottish accent. Um, like Jay, um, like uh, the University of Glasgow, the University of Stirling is uh, based in Scotland. So the main, um, what I want to say to you about uh, the University of Stirling is it's a purpose-built campus university. Um, we're a medium-sized university with about 14,000 students, but we have 120 different nationalities uh, represented in our campus. That's in our student body, but also across our staff as well. Um, some of the things that we're most proud of is our um, student satisfaction rate. So we're consistently in the top 20 in the UK. Um, there's a student survey that comes out every year called the National Student Survey, and it's students that um, vote for their teaching and they rate their teaching and their learning and just their overall experience and consistently Sterling comes in the top 20 in that. Um, another thing that we're very proud of is our employability rate. So 95% of our graduates are in graduate type employment or in further study, so master's level study um, within the first six months of graduating. So that's a, an exceptionally high um, employability rate as well. Um, we're well known for sport, we're Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence, um, and last year we were also the UK Sports University um, of the Year. So you're probably wanting to see a picture of Stirling, but um, just coming on to that, before I go into that, I uh, want to sort of tell you about the location. Well, obviously, things are a lot smaller in Scotland, like Jay mentioned, we're a population um, of 5 million, um, so, so a lot smaller, and there are more sheep 
than than people. Um, the heart there represents where Stirling is, and Stirling is very much in the heart of Scotland. It's easily accessible to the larger cities, like Jay mentioned, Glasgow is the largest, and Edinburgh is the capital city. But in fact, Stirling used to be the ancient capital of Scotland. And for those of you that have seen the film Braveheart, uh, which stars Mel Gibson, who's an Australian, not a Scotsman, um, it's, it captures uh, the life of William Wallace, one of our national heroes, and Stirling is very much uh, William Wallace country. In fact, we have an on-site cinema, and the premiere, the world premiere of Braveheart was actually held on campus, on Stirling's campus. This is our beautiful campus, it's 330 um, acres, and it's quite unique in the fact that it's got uh, its own loch, which is Scottish word for lake, which you can see in the middle there, um, a nine hole golf course on campus, and we also have our own castle as well. It's a very much a community feel, and um, we've got two, over 2000 halls on the campus, we've got about 10 different restaurants and delis, We've got our own pharmacy, our own medical practice, and even our own vegan shop as well. So although we're about 10 minutes from the city centre of Stirling, um, you don't actually have to leave, um, you don't actually have to leave the campus. State-of-the-art sports facilities, are, as you would expect from Scotland's University for Sporting Excellence, and a lot of different scholarships to match that as well. And for those of you that have heard of uh, the world famous tennis player Andy Murray, he is a local boy and um, a few years ago opened our National Tennis Academy, which again is part of our sporting complex. Um, like Jay mentioned, in Scotland, it's a four year um, higher education system, so very similar to the US, um, and there's a lot of flexibility. And in fact, in Stirling, there's ultra flexibility. So you can actually pick up subjects that are cross faculty. You don't just have to stay within the confines of your faculty. We've got five different faculties, um, Sterling Management School, um, the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, the Faculty of Social Sciences, um, the Faculty of um, Natural Sciences, and last, the Faculty of Health, Science and Sport. So we cover everything from film and media to journalism, aquaculture, marine biology, um, a little bit of marketing. We've got criminology, sociology, politics. Um, so like you see, like you see a very broad program and um, you can take multiple subjects in the first two years before then specialising. Entry requirements, we are now test optional and we don't have an end date on that. Obviously, we're conscious it's been a very difficult year for everyone. Um, so there's no end date on, on being test optional at the moment. We're looking for a, a, a 3.0 um, unweighted GPA. And if you are submitting tests, those are the tests that we're looking at. For, for your application, we would need a personal statement, so um, it's an essay about yourself, and we'd obviously need an academic reference um, as well. Um, UCAS has been mentioned, so UCAS is probably the best one to use if you're thinking of applying to multiple uh, universities, not just in Scotland, but right across the UK, it's the same application process, and you can apply to up to five courses. Um, we also accept the Common App at Stirling, and we do have a direct application form too. In terms of scholarships, well, we do have sporting scholarships, as you would expect, and um, we have a number of different elite athletes there. Um, but for those of you, um, it's not just about sport, for those of you who don't like sport, like myself, um, there are also different types of sport, um, ultimate frisbee, octopus to name two, um, that you can get involved in and you don't have to be at the top of your sporting um, excellent. We do have an undergraduate international student uh, scholarship, so that's £2,000 fee waiver off your fees for each of the four years as well, and that's an automatic scholarship. And we do accept uh, FAFSA and uh, Sally May, and I'm conscious Christopher's just popped up, so I'll just sit through this. Uh, tuition fees, Stirling has been voted the safest student city in the UK, um, and it's also got one of the lowest uh, living costs as well. This tells you the, the sort of tuition fees. Student accommodation is all private, um, you've got all private rooms, and if you haven't mastered beans on toast, we have um, no meal plans, unfortunately, at Sterling, it's all self-catered, so you'll have to get a few recipes um, um, sort of master them. If you want to get in touch, I'm Ali Clark, I'm Head of Student Recruitment at Sterling, um, and I'm happy for you to get in touch uh, whenever you want. Back to Christopher. Great, thank you very much, Sterling, and thank you to all of our presenters this evening. 
We do have a few minutes remaining, so attendees, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to send them through the Q&A feature. Uh, while we're waiting to see what other questions come through, perhaps I can pose a question to you all. Uh, if you could answer uh, one of the following two questions, either what is your favorite event or tradition in town or on campus, or since uh, you are representing schools outside the US, uh, what is a frequently asked question that you receive from international students applying to your university? And we'll go back in that same order, starting with East London. Um, my favorite thing that takes place on campus, um, it's not necessarily a tradition, but we are located right on the river. And so it's probably one of the best um, spots in town to view the sunset. Um, there's also an airport right across the river. So it's a really kind of great place to just watch the planes take off and land and to also watch the sunset. All right, thank you. I live run underneath the San Francisco airport when I was in California. So that is a lot of fun. Uh, Essex? Um, we have a traditional event on campus called One World Essex. Uh, it's probably my favorite event. So it's a week long event um, that celebrates all the international cultures that are on campus. So there's a whole variety of stuff that goes on throughout the week, including um, an international food festival. There's something called a parade of uh, flags. There's also employability advice for working in the UK. Um, and we would celebrate like local culture as well. And then it basically just finishes off, finishes off with a huge international party. So yeah, I'd say One World Essex is my favorite thing, favorite event. Great, thank you. Glasgow? Um, not so much a favorite thing, but there's a, there's a superstition that, so inside the main building, there are four quadrants of grass that you are not supposed to touch. If you do, you will not graduate. And I just think about living in like Chicago or like, all right, that would never happen. But every time I've come to visit, it's, I mean, pristine. You would never, I mean, there's benches to, to enjoy the, the, the beautiful architecture, but that is the kind of the, the you know, the tall tale or whatever. Great, thank you. Have you ever seen anybody not graduate who stepped on the grass? <laughs> no, but of course I'm the one who's like, I, like I stepped on it being like, I'm not going here. So. <laughs> Uh, Melvin? Yeah, so uh, we have a new tradition of a welcoming ceremony uh, for new students. And when you come out of it, everyone gets a free Unimail hoodie. So that's a great thing. Uh, a geek asked a lot is a three-year degree recognized back in the state. Uh, for graduate school, it's really on a case-by-case. -case, so you really would want to check, look into the universities that you're thinking about graduate school. Majority do. Um, but also for jobs, not so much of an issue. Uh, there's a lot of Aussies working in the state, so that, that's the testament that um, not so much of an issue, three-year degree. So come get your hoodie, and then you can think about options after graduation. All right, thank you. Roehampton? One of my favorite parts of Roehampton is what I mentioned in my presentation, that the four colleges um, compete every academic school year um, for basically winning like a house cup. And I think that that's just a really fun part of being, you know, at university at Roehampton and being able to get involved and sort of a way to, um, you know, push yourself to get involved with more things um, because hopefully your college will win. And another little feature that I think is just fun is even though we're in Southwest London, um, if you go to the top of our library, you can see the whole entire um, city sky skyline of central London. So you really still feel like you're connected even though you're on this beautiful campus a little bit outside of center city. Great, thank you. Uh, Sterling? Well, uh, Christopher, I'm probably going to answer both because um, it ties quite nicely in. Uh, one of the questions that we do get asked by international students is, will there be men in kilts? Um, and uh, not, not, it's not necessarily an everyday occurrence, but on the 25th of January every year, we celebrate Burns Night. Um, and we do, yeah, Jay's clapping. Um, so that's um, something that our international students really um, love and sort of immerse themselves in Scottish culture. So we're celebrating 
our national poet Robert Burns um, while eating haggis and uh, listening to his poetry and, and music. So um, I think that's my, my favorite um, tradition. Great, thank you. Um, and again, thank you to all of you for taking the time to present about your universities this evening. And thank you to all of our attendees for joining us. Uh, before we end this session, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that when you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask that you take a minute and complete. And again, there are two other blocks of sessions this evening. So please feel free to sign up for those at the same website where you signed up for this session. And about one week from today, a recording of that session will also be available on that registration website. But thanks again, um, and good luck in your college search. Have a great evening.